Good day. My name is William McComish. I would like to thank the UPF for their invitation to be a keynote speaker. I'm sorry not to be able to be with you in person, but it was just too complicated to make the transfer from Switzerland to Derry City. So I will begin by asking myself, and to an extent yourselves, the basic question. How has one of the most beautiful countries in the world, which is Northern Ireland, with a very intelligent and hardworking population, become an extremely unhappy and frightened place? Now, my attitude to this problem is that of a participant, not that of a casual visitor who has listened to propaganda of one sort or another in the first pub that he visits. What are my qualifications for speaking? The first is that my family have lived in the north of Ireland for centuries. I was born in Armagh. I grew up in Belfast, and so far as I grew up, uh, and I attended the Royal Academy for 14 years. I then moved to Trinity College Dublin as my university before Geneva, and Trinity awarded me a BA and an MA. So my father, family has been seen in various roles. On my mother's side, there was Henry Joy McCracken, who was hanged by the British for armed rebellion after the 1798 rebellion. And I had a grandfather who signed the Ulster Covenant in 1912. My father was one of the group that founded the Alliance Party. My mother had distinct Republican views. I was heavily involved as a peacemaker in the riots in 1969 and for many years afterwards on the peace line in the New Lodge Road. I was a prison chaplain. I knew many of the leading terrorists who were imprisoned, including the Price sisters. I have been under fire for many times, and if I accepted a post in Geneva, which was meant to be temporary, in fact, it turned out to be permanent, it was because it took my children away from a situation of considerable danger. So I was not an observer, but a participant. Now, what is the basic problem in the north of Ireland? To me, it is that the population is living through self-generating myths about the past, fantasies, but these are autodynamic. Part of the basic problem is that the Irish in general, and the Northern Irish in particular, have a great sense of history, but no sense of perspective. This is unoriginal, but profoundly true. The Irish potato famine is seen as a British crime that happened yesterday. It actually happened nearly two centuries ago, both assertions being incorrect. I always think that one good introduction to the Irish situation 
is to read Sean O'Casey's Shadow of a Gunman. This is the basic commentary of a Dublin Protestant on Irish attitudes to the past. Now, these are two magnificent traditions, Irish nationalism and Ulster Unionism. Both grew out of different versions of 19th century nationalism. These traditions have both created their own ethos. For one, the Ulster Division on the Somme, and for the other, the Irish War of Independence. The problem is that they haven't involved much. But the world has changed. Both, it seems to me, are out of context today. The world, as I say, has changed. Both define themselves in terms of the pre-First World War British Empire for and against. But the empire is long gone. Another important reality is the fall from grace and power of the Roman Catholic Church in Ireland. Always a Protestant fear. There is a European Union. There is Brexit, the fall of communism, the rise of China, Daesh. There is a British Prime Minister who readily breaks international agreements he has just signed and whom nobody trusts any longer. This situation is light years away from that of 1912. Britain has, I suspect, a thinly veiled desire to get rid of Northern Ireland and the Republic with its very hard-won prosperity, is generally mistrustful. The Northern Irish have only themselves to blame for this situation. They have been very inward-looking. They have largely created their own prison through seeing the world exclusively in their own terms. Now, what? are their own terms. Fear and victimization are the essential terms that largely define unionist and republican basic attitudes. The unionists have always been afraid of republican numbers. Catholic families with great numbers of children. This was not totally unreasonable in the past and was on occasion encouraged by Republican leaders themselves. The Unionists have always been afraid of losing their majority, which led to gerrymandering in Derry City, among other places. The Republicans have seen themselves as victims, not always unjustified, but often exaggerated. In modern times, and I am talking about recent events, the Irish have not suffered anything like other peoples. The Cambodians, with maybe three million deaths, between 1975 and 1979 with the Khmer Rouge, Rwanda with maybe a million massacred in 1994, the Vietnam War, Syria, Ireland has suffered, but not on the same level. But whether motivated, motivated by fear or victimization, it is time the Northern Irish realize that they actually mean little or nothing to the rest of the world. 
virtually nobody is interested in them. Justified or not, fear and victimization remain a basis for belief and action at the present time. Now, I have often asked myself, if I were a dictator, how I should resolve the situation. The best answer I have found comes from my own experience. Almost by accident, I came to Switzerland, first to study for my doctorate and later on to live and work in Geneva with my family. Now, Switzerland has a much greater basic problem than Northern Ireland. There is a history of civil war, there are two main religions, and that is compounded by having four national languages. Yet the pragmatic Swiss have created a very happy country where nobody is afraid and nobody feels a victim. I see no reason why their solution shouldn't work in the north of Ireland. Switzerland is divided up into self-governing cantons, each with its own identity, traditions, and laws. These cantons then to come together for major important matters such as defense and foreign policy. But as a solution, it requires enormous imagination and fresh thinking. Who is going to oppose a solution of this kind? I would think those who profit from fear and victimization, and they are many. Most people in Northern Ireland only want to get on with their own lives. Many are afraid of the future with an ongoing unease about civil war and civil disobedience. Some people define their lives on that possibility. Some enjoy it, even work for it. But to find lasting peace in Northern Ireland, we must not seek to contain the impulses for hatred and violence, but to eliminate them by eliminating fear and victimization. Thank you very much.